Hello and welcome to today's lecture. This is the first one in the new chapter which I called Biogeography. Uh, we will talk about uh, biodiversity in the sense of its geographical properties, but more that from the next presentation onwards today we will stick to something called uh, al Alpha, Beta and Gamma Biodiversity. My name is Divna, so we can start. For the beginning, let's refresh our memory on what biodiversity is. So, by definition, biodiversity is richness of species in an area uh, plus non-living component of that landscape, namely abiotic factors. I, I'm, I'm hoping you, you remember this from some of the previous presentations. So, as you re hopefully remember, depending on abiotic factors, certain landscapes can develop in more or less rich biodiversity areas. So for example, that sea picture you can see here is not really a species abundant ecosystem due to its harsh, harsh conditions. But on the other hand, we have a rainforest, for example, this picture, they're flourishing with, with thousands of different species of plants and animals because obviously it has some good qualities of the surround, surrounding which are pushing species to develop and spread. So basically species richness is simply defined as the number of different species represented in ecological community, landscape or regions. So important thing to remember is species richness. There are few, few noticed rules on species richness here on Earth and how they influence it and some of them are for example geo geographical factors in the wider sense like latitude, depth, height, depending on which ecosystem we're talking about, so land, landscape or aquatic ecosystem and so on. Next we can define it as a physical or chemical factors which would be area productivity, climate change, wealth and resources and so on. Next would be degradation level which basically messes up the correlation between species richness and named geographical factors of the area. So basically the influence, uh, anthropogenic influence on an area and how much these bal natural balances are, are disrupted. And as the last would be interspecies interactions or biological influences of it like predation, competition and so on and we talked about all of this in the previous presentation is that this is how we put it in in, uh, in the context but after all these named factors uh, most visible one would be the factor of geographical longitude basically showing us that from poles going towards the hot belt species richness always grow you can see it here so here it is low to high here is really poor in, in species abundance and then you're going towards the hot belt which would be Africa and South America the, the biggest concentration of different species on an area would be definitely in that hot belt area and then when you go back to the poles it goes back to the blue collar or in this picture um, the, the lowest species abundance but this is something we will talk about in, in a future presentation. Now I would like to introduce you to more, more characteristics of biodiversity. So next to already mentioned species richness. One more important characteristic is so-called evenness. So proportions of species of functional groups pres present on site. That will be a definition of evenness. Uh, the more equal species are in proportion to each other, the greater the evenness on the site is. Uh, a site with low evenness indicates that a few species dominate the site, which also can be understood as a opposite, basically, of, of species richness. And this is a nice diagram showing the, the idea of richness and evenness. So this is okay, badly wrote, but this would be uh, species richness, this would be species evenness. So this is different, representing different dot color, represent different species. And this here have only one species and it's evenly 
spread around uh, the same as this one, but this one is more more rich in, in species diversity. So when you finished explaining this one, let's say you want to measure how a certain area is rich in species. So to ask a first question, why would you do that? Uh, because high biodiversity, so basically species richness, is perceived as a synonymous with ecosystem health. In general, diverse communities are believed to have increased stability, increased productivity, and resistance to invasions and other disturbances. So we would like to our habitats to be as diverse as possible, and you can consider this as a table with more legs. So if there's a table only with three legs, if you cut one, the table is falling, but if there's like six legs, even if you cut one, the stability remains, so they have more points of relying and keeping the balance. So species richness of an ecosystem is um, a sign of a health of a biodiversity, and we like to remain in like that for our, all our ecosystems. A second question would be, how you're gonna measure the richness, which we obviously appreciate a lot. Mr. Whitaker was the one who in, let's say, 70s defined basic three terms to measure diversity in respect to its richness, or species of course, and he named them alpha, beta, and gamma diversity. So as Wikipedia would suggest, Whitaker's idea was that the total species diversity in a landscape which is gamma diversity, but we will, of course, talk in details about all of them right later. So, total species diversity in a landscape is defined by two different things. The mean species diversity in site or habitat at a more local scale, and the differences among those habitats, which would be better diversity, more in detail to follow. So here, we can define as alpha diversity as the variety of organisms occurring in a given place or a habit or simply number of different species in a small local area or species richness altogether so let's say a, a city would be an alpha diversity representation species richness within one city um, the most exact uh, exact expression is linked with both the number of species and their proportion in which each species is represented in the community or, or even as we, we mentioned. So in short, a community will have a high alpha diversity when there is a high number of species in their abundance are much similar. So let's say we define alpha diversity. You will have much more clear picture on this on the last slide. Second, we have beta biodiversity and it measures the turnover of species between two sites in terms of gain or loss of species in general it describes differences in species richness of, of two sites like smaller ones within some bigger area so let's say they have two cities within a state so each city would be an alpha biodiversity diversity and then differences between diversities between these two cities would be beta diversity. So beta diversity represents like a metric of turnover or dissimilar dissimilarity between sites. And since it is a metric, it can be calculated here. Thus, calculating beta diversity in this way allows us to compare diversity between ecosystems or any any sites but only depending on what species scale we, we take for our research. So of course we can talk about two trees logs in a, within a forest, we can talk about two cities within a country, or we can talk about two whole geo area within a one continent or two continents, taking them as an alpha diversity and difference between them would be a beta diversity. So. Uh, then in the next slide I will explain the gamma one. It's complicated because you have to describe each one of them, but they are all dependent on the other two. But as I mentioned in the last slide, you will get the clear picture of all of it. But what it says is that you have like a alpha diversity, which we define, so it's a, 
basically a number of species in an area just go and count species and that will be uh, alpha so you can have a um, value of alpha right with right on a field the gamma would be a general area so many alphas altogether are parts of a bigger area which would be gamma more in the, in the next presentation but which means that you can have a number of gamma as well the value because you just go count all the a's and then you just add them or, or divide beta with and then you get it but so you have alpha where right away you have gamma and when you make this kind of equation you will get the beta which is basically the only one who needs to be calculated because these just need to be count and now on, on, on gamma biodiversity uh, this actually means that Gamma diversity represents species richness of the whole general area, as I mentioned. But so many alpha diversity area. So in general, it represents the total species diversity of a landscape, or like a species pool. Or let's call it like that. But the, it all depends of what you take as an alpha, and then turns to to gamma diversity depends on a, on a scale of. Uh, an area so geoscale as so this is similar to the previous formula gamma as being a big area so as I mentioned um, let's say earth towards the continent so continents would be alpha earth would be gamma so general area or cities and country or countries and continent so bigger area which is made of few smaller alpha areas differences between alphas is beta and if you combine beta and alpha diversity you can calculate gamma or you can just add few alphas but well it all depends what you need out of those informations and this is a nice representation of the whole whole problem so we have alpha 1 and alpha 2 which are like smaller areas Beta is differences between two of this, so beta would be green, green, red, pink, and blue because yellow is the same. So these four are different. This is differences between two alpha sites are represented in beta value, and then gamma would be combination of all the alphas. Here we have only two, so it will be five different squares because yellow is repeated. So combination of all five species is represented in gamma diversity because it is general combination of two alphas. And that's that's the whole philosophy behind all this theory. And even though it seems really simple, it is really useful tool which we can further use to define the health of a certain area of an ecosystem and then further decide what type of a protection of an area we can implement and so on okay from the next presentation onward we will talk about real biogeography this was just an introduction to the chapter so if you're interested talk to you in the next presentation thank you for listening ciao